Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 29 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. As you can see from the title of this video, this is going to be a planning video, so we're not going to be diving into Unity, but we are going to be kind of figuring out how we want to set up our character controller for flight in our game world. I'm also going to take some time to at the front here to um, talk a little bit about what the future of this series is going to be. We are now in the last leg of the series and so we're probably going to be going pretty quickly through stuff since we've set up a lot of the basics in the first two parts of this series. So this video is going to be basically planning our controller then we're going to talk about setting up our kind of in-game controller switch for this particular controller. Uh, from there we're going to implement the actual controls, the methods, and things like that that we're going to use. That should only take one to two videos since we have so much of the foundation already in place. And then lastly I'm just going to go through some optimizations and bug fixes for the entire series in ways that we can kind of streamline what we've done over the course of all this. So let's dive into planning this controller. There are three methods we can use to approach uh, designing this controller, and we're going to look at them based on the various buttons and axes that we're using to control, as well as our camera, kind of like we did for our walking controller and vehicle controller. So the three methods that we could approach this are the three ax what I'm calling the three-axis approach, the constant acceleration, or the flapping method. So three-axis is very much like what our walking controller is on the ground, but instead adding in this third axis of motion so that we have complete control, kind of being able to stop on a dime and move wherever we want in all three axes. In this case, our horizontal axis is going to be controlling when we're moving left and right, vertical axis controls moving forward and backward. But now our buttons 0 and 1 are going to be in control of increasing and decreasing our elevation respectively. So that's going to give us, like I say, that perfect movement on all three axes of motion. Lastly, our um, button 2 is going to be responsible for being able to exit out of this controller just going back to the walking controller. In fact, for all three of these, we're going to just kind of relegate button 2 to being the exit button. Um, because this is so much like our walking controller, we would use a similar camera setup to that where we're going to have that top-down camera setup, and so that really shows how we're going to be able to use this three-axis system. It gives us great amount of control and motion, however we lose the ability to really do anything else. We don't have those attack or interact buttons here because we're controlling everything based solely on motion. The constant acceleration approach basically looks at our controller and says if we're adding in this new axis up and down, let's remove one of the other axes so that we don't have we don't have additional information to worry about. So in this case we would actually get rid of our forward uh, motion controls and just say you're constantly moving forward. At this point this feels a lot like a vehicle movement so we would probably use that sort of follow cam approach that we did with our vehicle controller. So in this case our horizontal axis still controls left and right but probably turning left and right since we're always moving forward now we can actually kind of control our facing. Uh, vertical axis is now in control of the up and down elevation whether that's actually up uh, up axis means up motion or if we're going to do reverse controls is a whole other subject with a plenty of videos talking about the pros and cons of both approaches, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But what's really nice about this approach is that we see that we have all of our motion controlled in two axes, so that we still have two buttons free for other kinds of things like whether it's interactions, attacks, you can even put in a brake or something here so that while you're always moving forward, you have a little bit more maneuverability and you're able to control that at least a little bit. Finally, there's the flapping method, which is really kind of splits the difference of the two. It's sort of, it's not three axes, it's not two axes, it's kind of two and a half. Because think of it like you're a bird and you're, you know, gliding around and you're slowly being dragged down by gravity. Not, you know, not super quick, but you are, that force is slowly moving on you. Then what you do is you flap your wings and you get this big, you know, gust of air and you push up in a big pulse. And then once that ends, you start slowly drifting down again. That basic idea is what we're talking about here where we're eliminating half of an axis because you don't have to worry about controlling your downward movement because that's a constant force that is on you, albeit a slow one. So in this case, we could actually have this work with either type of camera. And our horizontal axis once again controls left or right movement, whether that's moving or turning. Our vertical axis will still control forward and backward motion, but now our zero button is going to control just upward motion. It's going to give us kind of this pulse or this boost of up upward motion that increases our elevation and then when that finally runs out we continue to drift down slowly again. This one again in the same way of splitting that difference only leaves us with one free action 
but it gives us a little bit more control of our horizontal motion, both left to right and forward backward. So these are the three approaches that we can take. I think because the way that I'm building this world, um, our walking controller is going to go directly to our flight controller. We're going to keep that same character. He just is able to fly now. And I really, as a game designer, like this idea of that you suddenly gain the ability to fly. You can go anywhere within the world. You have an immense amount of control doing so, but you don't have any actions that you can take. That's a really interesting trade-off from a game design perspective. So I think we're going to use the three-axis approach for this in the next couple of videos. Um, but like I say, the other two are also perfectly valid. They might take more of a vehicle style approach. We're going to be building this one out of what we've done with the walking controller. But I think with what you've seen in the previous videos, if you wanted to do the other two approaches, you absolutely could. And if there's a huge clamoring to see how those work, I can certainly approach those videos in the future. But for now, we're going to move forward with that three axis approach. And we're going to start by setting up how we're going to switch from our walking controller to our flight controller in our game world. And that's going to be the topic of our next video. So in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.